everyone welcome back to my channel today we are testing out a new foundation from Dior I'm sure you guys saw this foundation pop up all over and of course I had to pick it up and test it out for you guys up here on the screen is my age and all of my skin concerns and what I look for when I am wearing a new foundation I always think it's also very important for the person behind the camera to explain to the viewer what they like and what they dislike and what they look for when they're reviewing foundations now I will also leave a full list of other foundations and what shades I wear in those foundations in the description box down below so that you can know what my skin tone is and maybe kind of use that as a reference when it comes to buying this foundation and what shade to buy. So, this is called the Dior Forever Natural Nude Foundation. It is a lightweight foundation, offers 24-hour wear for a natural complexion. It also has 96% natural origin ingredients. Dior Forever has reinvented the natural complexion with natural nude foundation. It is a 24 hour perfection with a nude skin sensation thanks to its formula enriched with 96% natural origin ingredients and concentrated floral skincare. Fresh and lightweight, the Dior Forever Natural Nude Foundation Textures offers a natural and luminous finish with no mask-like effect, allowing the skin to breathe from morning to night. The complexion is flawlessly even for 24 hours nonstop. The skin is hydrated and radiant as if it was plumped. It says it does come in 17 custom shades created for everyone. Uh, so it doesn't have the full range like some of their other foundations have, you know, like over 40 shades. This one only has 17. I bought the shades 3 Warm and 4 Neutral, which I kind of go into that in the application, but I have to mix these two because I've still really struggled to try to find my right shade in Dior. If you guys are my skin tone and you have found your perfect shade in Dior, please let me know because I am still struggling with it. So that's all the information about it. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the application. And then of course I will do a six hour check-in out in the daylight so you guys can see what this looks like in natural daylight. Then I will also upload some images of the shades and how they compare to other shades that I have in my collection. And then we will get into my 12 hour check-in which will be the final day that I wear this. And I will give you my full thoughts on the foundation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the applications and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this new foundation from Dior. The packaging is very feminine, and very beautiful. I love the beige color, the glass bottle, very pretty. Now, I bought this in two shades, and there's a reason for that. I have still never, to this day, been able to get my correct shade when it comes to Dior foundations. So, for example, the backstage, I kind of have to do a little bit of mixery between 4 Neutral and 3 Warm. It's almost like 3 Warm is too light. The 4 Neutral is the right color, but it's a little bit too neutral. So... With the backstage, I always have to kind of do some mixing, which kind of keeps me from using that foundation. I'm going to be honest. I think it's a pretty foundation, but because I kind of have to mix the shades, it's a little bit harder. So that's the reason why I ordered 3 Warm and 4 Neutral, and I will probably end up having to mix these as well because I was swatching them on the back of my hand, and I'm just going to show you the difference. Like, the shades really do uh, jump pretty good. Um, I don't know why. I don't. Am I the only one that has the experience in trying to find your right shade in, in Dior? So this is 3 Warm and this is 4 Neutral. So this is a little bit too light, but it does have the warmth. But the 4 Neutral doesn't really have the warmth. 4 Warm might be the right shade, but when I tried the 4 Warm in the backstage, it was too dark. So it was almost like the 4 Neutral was perfect uh, depth of color, but it didn't have the right tone. And then if I went darker than 4 Neutral, I've been doing this for a while with D Dior. So I don't know if these correspond. I won't know until I swatch these shades next to other shades that I have from Dior. But based on my experience, I've tried the uh, 4 Warm and it's just too dark. It's almost like it just doesn't have, it has the warmth, but it's just too dark of a tone. And you can see the neutral always is has a little bit of a gray tone, so kind of keep that in mind. So this is the shade 
be with them mixed and I think that's a way better match for me. I already prepped my skin. I've applied my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream over top of my skincare and it's been sitting on my skin for about five minutes now. So I'm going to apply one side of the foundation with a brush and kind of blend it and push it into the skin with a sponge. And then on the other side, I'm going to just use a sponge only. Now this does feel like a very thick foundation. So I think a little bit of it will go a really long way. I'm gonna take my sponge and go into it just a little bit, just so that when I go to in with my sponge, it doesn't pick it all up, you know how that is. So I'm just gonna use the sponge to kind of push it into the skin. Okay, so this looks really natural, doesn't it? It looks really healthy and radiant. Uh, but what's interesting is that it's radiant, but it's setting down pretty quickly. So. I'm kind of curious about this. All right, I'm gonna go on this side with a sponge only and just start applying it on this side. Now, I'm not a fan of a sponge only. I feel like with a sponge sometimes, I have a tendency to put too much in one area. I like doing a thin even layer with a brush and then kind of going in with a sponge, but so it's kind of hard for me to use a sponge only. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not my favorite way to apply foundation. I love the sponge finish, but I love the way that the brush kind of like moves it throughout the skin. And I feel like I just get a more even application with a brush. So on the sponge side, I got way more coverage than the brush side. So you can see that the sponge side, I got a lot of coverage in this area and it covered up more of my hyperpigmentation on my forehead. And on the brush side, you can kind of see my skin coming through more and you can kind of see, you know, some of that coming through. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're I will say this is a thicker foundation and because it's so thick, I would, you know, I think because it's so thick, I prefer applying it with a brush uh, versus a sponge, but it is a very thick formula. So for those that like to apply with a sponge, and you know how a sponge will absorb too much of a foundation if it's too runny, if it has more of a thinner consistency, but because this is so thick, I don't really feel like the sponge absorbed a lot of it. So for those that just use a sponge only, but this is really beautiful. Like it looks absolutely gorgeous on my skin right now. So far, this is kind of reminding me of the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Foundation, the one in the fancy bottle, the one that's like $150. And the reason why I say that is because this foundation is has a shine to it. It has a very like um, very dewy kind of uh, shine to it but I feel like it sets down. So even though it's still a little bit tacky, I feel like once it continues to kind of set down and like blend into the skin, I feel like this might be one that gives the illusion of a very radiant finish, but sets down. That's kind of the vibe that it's giving me right now. And I don't know, I'm really curious about this. This is really beautiful. Based on just first impression, this is a really beautiful foundation. So I kind of have high hopes, which I'm not really surprised by that because Dior seems to always have really good foundations. So that's it for the application portion of the video. I will see you guys in my next check-in. Okay, you guys, I wanted to pop out here and do a quick check-in on the foundation. So it is currently almost six, it's it's almost 5.30. So I've had this foundation on for about five hours, maybe almost six, but I wanted to come out and show you guys what it looks like before it gets dark. Um, the foundation looks really beautiful. It does, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now I will show you 
right here on the chin it is a little bit cakey but the reason why it looks a little heavier in this area is because I am actually testing out the new um, Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder. And so as soon as I applied the powder, it got a little bit cakey in this area. Uh, and it was the powder. It wasn't the foundation. I've been wearing this foundation for a couple days now, so I know how it wears. And it wasn't the foundation. But... As you can see, it does look good over the texture that's healing over here, and it looks really good on the texture on this side. It doesn't look it doesn't look heavy or anything in any of like this area, and it doesn't look heavy in this area on this side. And also, I mean, you can see it's still looking pretty good along my forehead. When I get into my final thoughts about this foundation, I will definitely let you guys know um how it performs with a lightweight powder versus a more dense powder because i will be testing this with different powders so i'll kind of give you i will kind of get into that because i do think um loose powder does help this a little bit which i will get into that um but for now this is the six hour daylight check-in on this foundation i will see you guys all in my 12 hour check-in which will also be my final thoughts Okay, you guys, it has been several days since I filmed the intro and the application of this foundation. I was only expecting to wear this for three or four days, and here we are seven days in. I have been wearing this for a while now uh, because I've had some struggles. I have had some struggles. Before we jump into the 12-hour check-in and my final thoughts about this foundation, I wanted to mention in the uh, swatches... The first swatch, you could tell that the uh, 3W, which I have now given to my daughter, because I'm actually wearing 4N by itself. Uh, you know, when I first started, I thought 4N was a little bit too neutral, but I am, I am able to wear it on its own, and that's what I'm wearing today. Uh, so I went ahead and let my daughter use the shade 3W. But anyway, as you notice in the swatches, 3 warm when you first apply it it's really light but then it does oxidize a little bit as it dries so you'll notice as the swatches continue that shade changes a little bit so I just wanted to let you know also I'm not sure if you guys noticed but in the swatches of these two shades next to the other Dior shades in my collection no wonder I'm having a hard time finding my right shade in Dior they're never consistent if you guys look at those images, none of the shades, I've bought several in the 4N and they're, they all look different. So it's pretty crazy. No wonder I can't find my right shade in Dior foundations. They just vary from foundation to foundation. It is currently 10 o'clock at night. I applied this right around 9 30, 10 o'clock this morning. So it has been 12 hours. I know that many of you guys have been waiting for my review on this foundation and I appreciate your guys' patience in waiting because it's definitely taken me much longer than I expected. So let's kind of zoom in, show you guys what the foundation's looking like. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the ring light. Uh, so now I just have the two um, like box lights sitting in the back. Now, as you can see, I've pretty much lost all of the coverage around my nose, which is very typical with most foundations. Most foundations, I will lose my coverage around this area. So let's just show you what it looks like right now and I will get into what I did today. Um, so I've powdered this with two different powders, which I will get into why I have to powder this with two different powders in order to make it work. But we're just gonna inspect the skin. The way that I'm wearing it today is the best that it looks on my skin. It looks pretty good over this big craziness I got going on right here. 
I'm supposed to be on my period, so I'm breaking out like crazy. It just is what it is. It's called adult acne. I Most of the time I have it under control, but when it's hormonal, it just goes out the window. Um, but it looks really, really good. It does. It looks really good for being on for 12 hours. Um, and like I said, I have to wear two different power powders to make it look like this, but it does look really, really good. Okay, so as you guys know, normally when I put on my, my makeup routine is I put on my foundation, put on my concealer. Once I put on my contour bronzer and, you know, blush and stuff, I will go ahead and put a light dust of my Hourglass Loose Translucent Setting Powder all over the skin. And then I normally just take my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder and I will powder right here in this area and sometimes right here just to kind of smooth that out. I never, I mean, I never put this powder all over my face. It's always been a little bit too drying of a powder. The loose powder is not as drying as this powder from Charlotte Tilbury. So if you guys watched my Instagram stories and my stories here on YouTube, you will have heard me talk about my review being very inconsistent. So one day I wear it and it's beautiful. And the next day I wear it, I absolutely hate it. And it's a complete disaster and it completely like peels off of my skin. It's the weirdest thing. So I was thinking, well, what is the deal with this? Like, what is going on with this? Why am I having such inconsistent results? Now, don't get me wrong. When I'm testing a foundation, I test it with different primers. I test it with different powders. I like to get a real good feel with the foundations. And yes, I wear, you know, yes, when I applied it the day on camera, I used the Magic Cream. The Magic Cream is a little bit too moisturizing to wear underneath this foundation. This foundation is very radiant and it's more of a very fresh glow. Over the days that I have worn this, the best way for me to wear this foundation is to apply the Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder and the Charlotte Tilbury Setting Powder all over the face. If I double powder it, this is how it will now, look. I have worn this three days with a mask. Two of the three days when I took my mask off, I had no makeup from here over. I had lost, I had a line. Like I li literally had a line right here where I lost all of this foundation. All of my foundation was gone on my nose. It was crazy. And then the one day that I wore a mask for, and probably I was wearing a mask two or three, four hours total, uh, these three days, the one day I wore the mask and I double powdered it, I only lost coverage right here around my nose, which was totally fine. So for me, this foundation is best for dry skin. If you are dry skinned, you will love this because it is very radiant and it is very fresh and healthy and dewy and just kind of gives you all the feels if you love that very radiant look. If you're normal and you like a radiance, then you will love this, but if you're combo, you are really gonna wanna set the crap out of this. And I'm not combo, I'm normal right now. So normally in the winter time, I'm more dry and during the summer, you know, spring, summer, fall, I'm more normal. This just kind of becomes a slip and slide in type of foundation on my skin. I have a lot of dewy foundations in my collections. I mean, this one from Chanel is one of my favorites. I don't wear this on camera a lot because it reflects too much, but this is the La Beige. I absolutely love this. It's so, 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 so beautiful. Um, but this one is very healthy, very radiant, but this one lasts on my skin better than this one from Dior and I don't have to double powder this. I also really, really love the stick foundation from uh, Tom Ford, which is definitely a little bit more of a dewier, um, natural, nude type skin and it wears beautifully and it wears off very beautifully. Even though it's radiant, uh, it lasts on my skin longer just by using one powder. Same goes for the Pat McGrath. So I don't have to double powder this. I don't have a foundation in my collection that I have to double powder. So this one is definitely very radiant very dewy. It's not really that surprising because it is a very thick formula. I do think it is a beautiful medium coverage and it lasts, the coverage lasts all day. It's just, it starts to kind of like peel completely away from my skin. If you're struggling with this and you have it and you struggled with it, 
use less product because it does have pretty good pigment so it doesn't seem like you have to use a lot but I've noticed that if I get a little bit heavy-handed in certain areas that will be the first place that it will start to break apart so be mindful of how much you're actually using um, and how much you're applying especially in those combination areas if you have any type of you know extra excess oil in like the t-zone just be very very careful um but overall this isn't my favorite radiant foundation but i think it is a beautiful foundation now that i've kind of figured out how to make it work it is a very beautiful foundation so those are my overall thoughts thank you for being patient with me Sound off down below in the comment section. Let us know, have you guys bought this foundation, what your skin type is, and your experience? Because I am very curious, you know, I've been wearing this seven days. I wore it with multiple different primers. I had to set it with different um, powders to make it really work for me. And I'm just curious if anybody else is having that experience. So sound off down below in the comment section. Let us know your thoughts and your experience because I know that all makeup is subjective and just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it's not going to work for you i just have to make this one work you know most of my foundations that i absolutely love i don't have to make them work this one i can make work and it will be very beautiful i mean this is really beautiful right i mean my skin looks absolutely beautiful for 12 hours but I had to really lock and load it to make it that way. And I have a lot of foundations that I don't really have to do that with. So it just depends. I don't know that this will be a foundation that I will reach for a lot, but I am happy to have it in my collection and I do think it is really beautiful. So those are my overall thoughts. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all in my next video. Love you. Bye.